Rayleigh fading versus Ricean fading. Which one is better? So Rayleigh fading, of course, is when there's lots of multi-path, and Ricean fading is when there is a dominant path plus the multi-path. And I've often heard people say that you need lots of rich multi-path in MIMO channels in particular to get effective communications. And that Ricean with the dominant path does not have those multiple paths to the same degree. And so therefore, if you take that line of thinking, you might think that Rayleigh fading is the better channel to have. If you think like that, you might start to think, and I've heard people say that you might think about actually blocking a direct line of, part of sight and that you might get an advantage in your communication systems if you block the direct line of sight. And that sounds counterintuitive in terms of deliberately receiving less power. Doesn't make sense. So what's going on? How do we compare the two? Well, let's look at this model here. The received signal equals the channel times the transmitted signal plus noise, of course, when we've got NR receive antennas and NT transmit antennas. And the in the um, general model here is that the channel H equals a gain term A times mu, which is the line of sight path or dominant path, plus the square root of B times H omega. And this is a common model where H omega is an IID channel component. So we've got the, if, if A equals zero, then we would just have a Rayleigh channel. And when A does not equal zero, we've got the dominant line of sight, uh, which is the Ricean component. And we characterize this by the common K factor or K Ricean factor, where for this model here, it equals the A squared on B. It's the power in the dominant path divided by the power in the multiple path. So this is a, a way of characterizing the Ricean factor according to this model. And this is going to give us a good way of exploring this question about which are better. And really it comes down to how you normalize the power when you're doing your comparison between Rayleigh and Ricean. And let's look at two different models for the way we define A and B in our normalization. So here's model A, and model A has a situation where A equals given by this value and B by this, and model B, we have A is the square root of K and B is one. Both of these models have give you the same K factor. So they're just two different ways of normalizing the power and exploring the relationship between the uh, different line of sight component, dominant component, and the reflective component for the same K factor. And what we can see, the diff key differences between these two models is that for model A, the receiver SNR is the same for all values of K, whereas for model B, the receiver SNR scales with the value of K. And that's because we are holding B constant in this model. Like I say again though, both models give you the same K factor. So now let's look at a comparison of the two. And this is where you see this difference uh, in the way that it often presented. Sometimes in papers they use model A, sometimes they're using model B, and you get exactly the opposite results if you use one from the other. Let's see that how that is uh, shown in this curve. Here's a curve of the K factor versus the capacity loss or gain uh, as a result of that K factor. And here, when K factor equals zero, of course, we have the Rayleigh scenario. So when K factor equals zero, there's no dominant path, uh, there's just a Rayleigh result. And so we're normalizing that to be zero, and we're gonna look at the capacity loss gain in comparison to that. So as the K factor goes up, under model A, where the receiver SNR is the same for all K, as the K factor goes up, there's more energy in the dominant path and less in the reflective paths because the receiver SNR remains the same as you move along this curve. And for that scenario, it certainly is the case as there's less energy in the reflective paths, then there's, there's less capacity because the dominant path uh, doesn't give you the, the diversity that the reflective paths do. And as you use model A and increase K, you're getting less energy in your reflective paths. But if you're looking at model B, as you increase the K factor, the SNR scales with the K factor. The power in the reflective path stays the same, 
B equals one, and the power in the main uh, direct path increases. So overall, you're getting more SNR at the receiver under model B. And in that case, you get a gain from having an increase in K factor. So if you're looking at model B, you'd be thinking that the Ricean fading is giving you an advantage over Rayleigh. If you're looking at model A, you would be thinking that the Ricean factor is giving you a disadvantage compared to Rayleigh. Really, it all comes down to the scaling of the power. And as long as you understand the scaling of the power, you're going to understand how you interpret the relationship of the Rayleigh versus the Ricean. In practice, uh, the Ricean, if you can have an increase in your dominant path, if you can get more line of sight, then in general, in practice, you would be doing that in addition to whatever reflective paths are around. So in general, in reality, it's going to be model B that you're looking at. And you never want to have a scenario in practice where you deliberately block the line of sight because that will, will not increase the actual energy in the reflective paths. It might make them greater in relative to the direct line of sight. And that makes you uh, according to um, model A. But in reality, it's not going to make them bigger in magnitude, just relative. So don't get tricked between these models. Uh, as long as you understand these models, you'll understand the difference between Rayleigh and Ricean in terms of their performance. So if this video has helped you, uh, give it a thumbs up, helps others to find the video. Uh, check out the description below the video. There's a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.